Hi, I'm Alec Delancey and I'm a psychologist working in the field of mental health and education and today's topic is study tips and learning techniques. Now students always want to know what's the best study technique or tips to use to get information into their brains, to be able to retrieve that information, to be able to do well on tests, to learn new subject matter so that they will do really good on quizzes, they'll be able to answer when a teacher or professor or lecturer asks a question, they'll be able to answer the question effectively and correctly. Also too, there are persons who might be in the workplace and they too, always learning something new. Maybe there's a project that uh, they're working on. Maybe uh, the project calls for some kind of new learning. Maybe they have to pull information from different subject matter, different specializations to put together so that they can be able to get this project done. So there's a, a number of tips or strategies that are out there that can help persons to really study more effectively, learn new tech, learn new information, be able to process that information, to be able to retrieve that information when it is necessary to do so. Now, there are a number of study techniques out there, and I want to just talk about a few of them today. And for some persons, those techniques will work right from day one. For other persons, they may have to try them for a little while. And yet there are other persons who may discover that those study techniques or, or study methods may actually not be for them. At the conclusion, I will always say that use the technique that you recognize works for you after a period of time of using it. So the first one I like to talk about, and this one is one that I was doing some research and I found this study technique is to actually listen to the lecture on 1.5. So what do I mean? If it's allowed, because I know that there are some universities that will allow it, some secondary schools may allow it, some primary schools as well. They, Of course, if you're not too sure, ask the principal, ask the dean, ask the form teacher, ask the lecturer, ask the professor if they will allow you to record their lectures. Now, if they say no, then no is no, right? What I will recommend is that you can actually, when you leave the uh, lecture hall or you leave the classroom, you can actually use maybe a phone or possibly you can use a recorder and speak into the recorder. And when you record whatever you will have read from your notes, you can use that. Right, So if you are not given the uh, privilege or the opportunity to record the, the audio of the lecture, then you can make your own recording, you speaking into some kind of recording device. So you listen the lecture on 1.5, so you put it on 1.5 speed. Now the idea behind this is that you're not going to learn deeply here. This is more like a broad kind of learning. But what your brain is going to do is it's going to be looking for specific pieces of content, specific pieces of information. And many a times the information it will be looking for are things that you kind of heard before, may have recognized, or something that jumps out to you as new. Uh, when it's going at 1.5, now some persons even put it faster, but... For starting out, I'll always recommend maybe a 1.5. So what you do is that you listen to the in entire thing, right? Entire recording. You listen to it and uh, you listen to it a few times. Now, this is not the only way you're going to learn the subject matter by just listening, right? But you listen to it a few times and you kind of get a broad sense of what is going on. So that's one of the study techniques I will recommend that you use when trying to learn something new, trying to get some information in your brain. Another study technique has to do with making summary pages. So imagine you read through, maybe it's a chapter in a textbook, maybe you read through that and you finish reading it. Try to now sit back and think about what did I just read you could even do like point forms or bullet point forms 
okay, this is what I remember reading, this is what I remember reading, this is what I remember reading, and you kind of write it down. Don't try to necessarily, when reading the textbook the first time, try to memorize any sentences or anything like that. You're just reading through. And afterwards, you're going to retrieve from your brain to see what you were able to actually remember. So that's another study technique or strategy that you can use. Uh, another one has to do with, and I found this one interesting. It's actually doodling. It's called the doodling method. Now, I guess persons will use various doodling. Some persons may actually draw shapes. Other persons may just, um, just scribble on a paper. So when you're reading a textbook, you, if you feel comfortable just scribbling on the paper while you're reading. So imagine yourself having a pen or a pencil. A piece of paper is right next to you. You're reading the textbook and you're just doodling right so for some persons especially those who may have attention disorders those who find it a little difficult to focus they may actually benefit quite well from this doodling method when reading it, it definitely i could see it helping with focus maybe even someone who is on the spectrum for autism uh doodling possibly can can work for for them another method that i think it's a good method uh, it has to do with um, deep processing of information. This is the Feynman method. So Richard Feynman, a uh, famous physicist, he used to try to understand everything he could about a specific subject matter. Something maybe he has to really know to either teach a class or maybe something he has to know to present or maybe he's doing some research and he really has to understand it. So he will try to get as much information on that subject matter as possible but what he will do next is that he will try to explain the information to someone who has absolutely no idea or probably little idea on the subject so imagine yourself maybe you're in secondary school and you have to learn either something in geography or mathematics or possibly history maybe it's Caribbean history or maybe it has to do with uh, social studies something to do with governments and so forth so you Try to learn as much as possible on the subject matter and then try to explain it to, let's say you're in a secondary school and you are in mm, Form 3. Try to explain that to a primary school student who is probably in Standard 3, right? Or try to explain it, let's say you're 14 years old, try to explain it to someone who might be 7. Use words, use phrases, use illustrations, use stories that this young person or this younger person can understand what you're talking about and of course if you're in the university try to explain it in such a way that let's say you're doing a master's try to explain it to maybe a secondary school student now when i say try to explain it to a secondary school student i don't mean necessarily to go out and find a secondary school student to explain it to them of course, if you could, maybe it's a family member or something like that, then you could find someone who you could explain it to them and kind of get a feedback, look at their facial reaction, uh, whether or not they look confused, they're scratching their head, they really don't know what you're talking about. Or if you can't find that person, what you can do is maybe just talk to an uh, imaginary classroom. Or you can probably, I know some people, they get really elaborate. They have like stuffed toys and they teach their stuffed toys and so forth. So maybe you can try that technique if you can't find anyone who is able to actually listen to you present the information. But I thought that this Feynman's method is a pretty good method so that you can have a deep understanding on the subject matter. And another one I will recommend has to do and this is another study technique or another um, kind of to add to your strategies that you can use this one has to do with uh, Tony Buzan his mind maps uh, he spoke a lot about that and uh, I'm not too sure if he actually created mind maps maybe he did but I remember reading uh, and looking at a lot of YouTube videos with him so you have in the middle you can start you should start in the middle it's a good place to start you put the topic and then 
from there you have like these offshoots right so on these offshoots you have exactly what uh, a little bit more a little bit more pertaining to the topic right however a key uh, principle to remember when doing mind maps or they're also called spider diagrams is that you don't write too much so it's not that you're going to flood notes on these offshoots and then when you make other offshoots you put more and more notes that's that's not how you how you do it you just put maybe a word maybe a phrase probably you could even draw a picture or something like that and you keep making these offshoots i, I see some people do some really elaborate ones uh, yours doesn't have to look like that you just do a mind map that you feel comfortable with and one that when you test your your knowledge you test to see how much you were able to remember when probably you close the mind map or you turn it over if you're able to remember quite a bit because you're visualizing the offshoots from the middle then you will know that your mind map is actually effective and is good for you right but don't put the whole set of information on it because it kind of will start looking like just you writing notes right that's not what a mind map or spider diagram is all about also too some persons tend to put different colors for the offshoots right you can choose to do like maybe the first set of offshoots can be green and then you can the second set from those individual offshoots could be red you can choose whatever color you want to to choose that's pretty much up to you now as we at the conclusion one of the things i will always recommend is to try all these different strategies upfront and quickly as possible because you want to know which one is working for you or which groups might be working for you because you may actually have to use different study techniques uh, different learning strategies so that you can learn effectively because one may not necessarily uh, be ideal you may have to use like different ones for different subjects or probably for the same subject you may have to use maybe two different kinds of these um, study tips that i just explained uh, but nonetheless don't be afraid to experiment with them uh, most times what i find is that for me not one works but actually a mixture of all of them work and they may work at different times sometimes it's just based on how you feel you do one particular um, study technique over another or at other occasions it may be that you know you need to kind of learn all these in a step or something like that and you realize that okay i probably just have to read through the notes and then when i read through the notes close my eyes or turn the paper over or close the book or something like that and try to write down all the points that i just memorized or possibly you may recognize that okay i'm going to use for this particular content i'm going to use a spider diagram or this mind map same thing spider diagram mind map and i'm going to try to visualize the the from the middle the different colors that off shooting and the different points that off shooting and i'm going to use that for a specific study of a particular content so you can decide that and uh, as i said if you do this early either at the start of the school period then it pretty much will um, go well for you because you're not just waiting until the last minute maybe when an exam comes around to try these methods and then realize that you're now stressing over trying to choose a method when probably up front you could have done that level of trying to figure out which method to use and which is most effective for you to learn so i hope that this content was uh, valuable please like and you can share this with someone else. All the best. Take care.